you know, if, if you could do some things, but not others, are you still free? And it, what, what's the threshold above which you're free and below which you're not? Freedoms are supposed to be kind of like blanket across this country, right? Yeah. So how is one state going to be freer than another if some serious rules aren't be broken? Federalist papers and stuff around the founding of the country, there was some conversation about whether the Bill of Rights even should be written at all, whether yeah. these things should be enumerated or, or, or not, because then it would be construed that the state bestowed these rights upon people. Freedom comes from your neighbors. Comes from them making the choice not to infringe on you. If you're the only person on your own planet, um, you have ultimate freedom. You can do whatever you want. As soon as more people come in, things start changing. You have to negotiate. You have to uh, you know, come up with compromises. Cat videos. Hey. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe I should. Oh, cat, cat video. <laughs> <laughs> I got my dinner from a garbage can. Another kitchen sink microscopy. I am Casey Rochford, the uh, the dude with no hair. Uh, you remember from last episode, and uh, we'd love it if you would like and share and subscribe to the channel because we think you're awesome and you should do what we think makes you an awesome person so you can remain an awesome person. Oh yeah, it's awesome to be awesome. <laughs> Uh, and you want to be awesome too don't you so i too am casey rochford oh wait hold on a second i'm eric rosenblatt that's right uh, always get those it's so easy to get those two dudes mixed up <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh don't forget we uh write our own music um and it's available on uh all kinds of music places like itunes and spotify and such so uh stick around to the end of the show and maybe you'll hear a new song that we've created and uh, check out our website at ksmvidcast.com for news and information and everything. Um, so, so Casey, uh, I don't know what we're going to talk about today, but you do. So uh, why don't you enlighten me as to what we're going to talk about today? All right. Well, I think we should talk about freedom. What is it? Like, oh man, like really? Like, there's a whole lot of different little rabbit holes that I want to run down from, but I just want to start with what does freedom mean to you? Oh man, I mean, that is a that's a complex. I, I mean, there, like you said, there's there's a lot of different directions that one could go and different definitions and and i'm sure for different people it's all over the map i guess to me freedom means the ability to be left alone That, that in a nutshell i guess like to make mistakes or or whatever but just to be able to just be without somebody telling you what to do um left alone like you shoot get away from me yeah <laughs> or <laughs> well if that's what is required i guess but but i mean you know to to be able to explore the world around you without interference i guess um ah, alice man's rat yeah it's the swedish concept of every man's land you know, yeah. roam yeah, around exactly. as long as you're not screwing things up 
Well, and that's want. the whole thing. The, 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 uh, you know, uh, non-aggression principle, like you, you don't do anything to other people, right? Like the, 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 the rules that apply to you apply to everybody else. So if, if everybody else is leaving you alone, you leave everybody else alone, uh, unless they ask for help, right? That, that's the condition upon which the, that changes, I guess. Um, how about you? Put on your cape and cowl and, and run to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so what Gosh. I mean, I mean it's kind of a simplistic definition that I gave there, and there's a lot more to it, which I'm sure we'll get into, but how about just like a synopsis? What how about how about you? What what do you think freedom is? Yes, I kind of feel like Honestly, whatever a person defines that as is probably valid. It's just variable, you know? Yeah. So, and, and where I'm coming from is I kind of had this idea that freedom, the concept of freedom is a social construct. Yeah. I, 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 be inclined to agree with that yeah yeah because i started breaking it down and i was like what if there was one being one sentient being on this planet right mm -hmm. nothing else right but it lives like forever and you know why would it ever have a concept of freedom it already does everything it wants to do it already doesn't impinge on anybody else you know, like because there is nobody else. Yeah, the null state is that freedom doesn't even really exist, right? Hmm. Yeah. So, would then the concept of freedom be born out of um, infringement uh, mechanisms? I guess that exist where where people like a, a prison that you're trapped in, or an island that you're on, and you want to get out or something yeah but it, like the, the 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 core like point like i started i started thinking like how 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 could i do an allegorical example right and maybe this is how the bible was written uh, <laughs> the guys being like how do we explain this and you know like <laughs> um, okay before I, even hearing what you say yes probably <laughs> 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 Well, so the Adam and Eve thing, right? Uh, Adam, first dude, you know, first human on Earth, supposedly, right? So yeah, so mm -hmm. he he basically has no concept of freedom. Like you know, there's there's nothing to show me that I can't do what I don't want to do. So like, I well, have no reason to I create mean, that, right? Other but than you add God in, with he, God's he, rules. Of course. Yeah, but I mean you had you add in someone like to interact with on a social mm -hmm. level. Yeah. And you know, suddenly what they want to do might intrude on what you want. And and mm -hmm. and it takes that kind of social interaction to create what freedom is. Wow, that was a long roundabout way to get there. No, I I <laughs> I I think I, I would agree, you know, like that, that's a really good point. And I think what you said earlier about freedom being, you know, meaning different things to different people. There's some people who feel like uh, in their conceptualization of freedom, um, you know, being safe is one of them. It's a factor uh, yeah. or, or having all the things they need to survive is part of that. Um, other people, it's just the struggle to get those things. Um, and being left to their own devices to to pursue that goal is freedom, you know. And, and I, I think it's it's certainly uh, diverged a lot um, it, over the years. Um, yeah, I mean, like as far as what kind of is in trend or whatever. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What the not whatever particular freedom is is 
more, most popular right then, you know. Yeah, well, and, and like I, I've often heard it said that the, the United States is like the freest country on the planet. And I, I, I kind of take issue with that because of the it's what we just there. said. <laughs> it's subjective. Like, yeah. well, what makes you free? I, you know, it just depends. Mm-hmm. Um, if yeah, for, for me, I as as uh, you know, anarchistic kind of individual, um, I don't think the United States is the freest place. And some places that other people would see as very not free would be a a haven for somebody like myself. Um, so it, yeah, it just kind of depends. Um, oh i had like this really good idea <laughs> oh shit. Uh, Sorry. Um, damn um th- th- there's so many like meta angles to take on this freedom thing like um well you know kind of go- going off of the subject of stuff i i've had a couple conversations with people in in recent months that have all said i want to move to x state and i'm like how, how come and they're like freedom <laughs> you know to find freedom or to be free like they feel trapped where they are i i could kind of see that kind of i mean but you know i would say if you're on planet earth you're always trapped to some extent yeah but i mean that or to how much that just got me thinking like you know, the freedoms are supposed to be kind of like blanket across this country, right? Yeah. So how is one state going to be freer than another if some serious rules aren't be broken, aren't being broken? You know, and that's because you can't just define freedom. It's you can't put legalese on it. It's so much different for each individual. Well, yeah, exactly. Because the thing is like it's one word to describe a variety of circumstances Mm -hmm. and and you know that's one of the things that i think is a problem with the english language is we kind of use context um or assumptions of meanings behind a singular word or something and maybe we need more words to describe that um a lot of things actually not just freedom but that Mm -hmm. that that is definitely one that that one word can't possibly encompass all the different schools of thought um but that that uh gravitate towards that term i guess Hmm. yeah so what if what if you could take away one of those particular freedoms would your entire freedom be null and void at that point do you still have like other freedoms still well oh that's a really interesting question um i guess it depends on what freedom I, i mean personally i don't think that freedom is bestowed upon us it's something that's intrinsic that that um we strive toward and all the while there's other actors in this play on this stage right you you know trying to get their way and manipulate us and do things um or whatever um manipulate us really (laughs) (laughs) um i i see context (laughs) (laughs) um but it it really does depend on what what it is that that's being done um you you know you could probably and that that is actually really brings up actually kind of a lot of interesting thoughts that you know are you still free if you're able to do x y and z but or Z for you uh, Brits, um, and uh, but not A, B, and C. 
you know, if, if you could do some things, but not others, are you still free? And it, what, what's the threshold above which you're free and below which you're not? Um, I've, yeah. I would ask that question to, to everybody. I think everyone would define it differently. You'd have these like schemes of, you know, people drawing a line from this to that and it would get all complicated. And oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like, okay. So people, people say, Oh, we're free here. Or I'd be like, like you said about moving to different States. I've heard people say, Oh, the, the free States or something <laughs> and I'm like are they really free <laughs> i mean i guess you can like impregnate your sister um <laughs> and have machine guns but then there's other things that are you know i, I lived in a free state um <laughs> actually like what one one person said that to me they're, they're like you're lucky you're in tennessee it's more free there and i was like what the hell do you mean because you know that was during like the you know the shutdowns and stuff yeah and there was stuff back here in washington that i was like oh well these these don't shut down um and then i i go down there and they're totally shut down and i was like what the hell and then huh. you know they're like basically never shutting down their restaurants people are just in there and doing their thing <laughs> you know like it's you know pick your thing you know cherry pick your thing or whatever and call that freer but you know across the board it's all like all over the place well yeah and and something like tennessee um i mean sure you might be able to go to a restaurant during covid or something like that um or buy yourself a machine gun um but can you be gay and society accepts you or trans or atheist yep you know like how does that you know what's free it all depends on who you are and what you value i guess yeah yeah and 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 so to say that something is free is is kind of i don't know i i mean i guess it's a little bit um I don't want to say disingenuous, but it, it's kind of uh, one-dimensional thinking. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. <clears throat> I guess. Hang on, I'm going to let my cat be free to jump up on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> That's her freedom that she's demanding right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tail. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, and, and uh, that, yeah, because to cats... I'm sure their view of freedom is completely different than ours. But that's the thing. It's like from one person to the next, it's entirely uh, based on your own perspective. It's completely subjective. And, and to say, oh, yeah, we're free because of X and Y. But, oh, wait, if you're one of those A, B, or C people, like we don't want you in here. <laughs> well, how free really are you at that point? But to me, I think, okay, as an anarchist, I think freedom is a place where anybody of any creed, color, background, religion, socioeconomic status, like it doesn't matter. Everybody is allowed as long as you don't aggress against anybody else. Like that, that's it. Um, but then again, there are going to be people who are going to be like, well, what about this? What about that? And, and I'm like, okay. Well, yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like the freedom gets treated like, you know, the Bible in a sense, you know, people basically look to it and interpret it, you know, as if, yeah. you know, it's like a gospel thing. It's like, oh, I've invoked freedom. Now you must, you know, like <laughs> take my, my opinions of what, what's free to me and, and somehow try to stretch and apply it over your laws and your rules and your governance and stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, in, in a way, it's almost like, you know, role-playing games or something like that. You're talking about invoking things, you know. I'm going to roll 2d20 <laughs> uh, for freedom. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. <clears throat> oh, I had a point. Well, the, the idea... I... Oh, sorry. 
Oh, no, I had a point I was going to make and I forgot it. So go ahead and I, oh. <laughs> I will try to remember. <laughs> I was going to say the whole idea of losing a freedom and just not being free. I mean, on one hand, it kind of comes to a kind of a host of logical fallacies there, right? This whole irreducible complexity sort of thing. Like, oh, if you take one part out, the whole doesn't work. Well, <laughs> Well, you, exactly. Sense. I mean, now it depends on, like I said earlier, it depends on what it is that that's affected, right? If your ability to travel um, a few meters, right, is restricted, like say like, they put you in a cage, are you free at that point or not free? If your ability, ability to eat is restricted, are you free or not free? If your ability to defend yourself is restricted, are you free or not free? Your ability to express yourself. You know, like, it just depends. I, I would say that all those things are actually kind of important. Um, so, and then also, it, it's like, who decides those things and why? And why would we let somebody be the arbiter of our decision making in that regard? Like, why not just live your life and don't be a dick uh, and, and leave it at that. Um, but, you know, we, we live in a world with uh, a complex rules and uh, that's just how it is for now. Um, oh, I, I remember, <laughs> I remember what I was going to say. Um, the, the thing is like, a lot of people, what I feel is that a lot of people who kind of uh, exalt this idea of like, oh, you know, America is like the freest place in the world or Utah or Arizona or whatever. Tennessee is the uh, freest place. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of like they're buying into propaganda because it's been constantly hammered that you know oh you know america the land of the free and and all this stuff and it's like okay you keep saying that word but i don't think that word means what you think it does <laughs> you know like you can say that we're free while you're whipping us but are we free because you say it or are you free because we enjoy being whipped or, or I, I don't know um it's good <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's the thing it's like a lot of that comes from the idea of people it's constantly reinforced that that the u.s is like a free oh you know it's all about freedom there's so much freedom here it's the freest country in the world and and all this stuff and i Fucking would disagree skeletor is always trying to like take away our freedom <laughs> yeah exactly there's always a bad guy right like you know and that's that's the tagline they want to take our freedoms they hate our freedoms you know like well yeah like the uh 9 11 all this stuff oh yeah they attacked us because they hate our freedoms okay i don't know anybody that would like rally together with a bunch of other people and go overseas and learn to fly and then hijack some planes to crash them into buildings because they don't like the way somebody lives their life. I have a feeling, um, and, and you know, this is a little more than a suspicion, but I have a feeling that we might have done something to them first to piss them off. But, you know, it, it, it all comes back down to that propaganda. Like, whoa, whoa, the freedom. They don't like the fact that we're free. And then, oh, oh, oh we're attacked because of our freedom. So why don't we give up a whole bunch of those things, you know, uh, backscatter x-rays, taking our shoes off, having fingers up your grand grandma's ass, looking for bombs and stuff like that. Uh, you know, diddling your kids uh, before they get onto a plane because freedom, you know, well, I, I think a line has been crossed there. Yeah. Um, oh, that damn Patriot Act. Ugh. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. That dude, <laughs> the Patriot Act. 
<laughs> and Homeland Security Act too. Don't forget that. Yeah. It's like, so any bill that comes out, whatever the name is, you can expect the effect is going to be 180 degrees from whatever the name is. Yeah. Like well, Patriot Act is absolutely him. unpatriotic. Yeah. That the home Homeland Security thing slowly started taking over things that provided just that security at home mm-hmm. right police and fire like i've seen them all like lumped under this like federal branch now yeah. that has been kind of created to like you know double speak or whatever <laughs> well yeah because you know security anywhere like we we've got to have full control of that because that was the breakdown right it was it wasn't the fact that we're completely flaccid and inept oh no no it's not that we don't know what 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 we're doing it's the fact that we didn't have enough fucking control so we need more control (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, yeah yeah let's let's avoid talking about 9-11 stuff Uh, yeah it's just gonna make me that would get us demonetized actually yeah yeah not allowed to talk about that anymore which is weird wow a little creepy Uh, kind of um man (laughs) yeah don't ask any uh you know uh difficult questions or or challenge any you know challenge the status quo or anything like that oh no no we can't have that cat videos hey (laughs) oh wait maybe i should cat cat video (laughs) i got my dinner from a garbage can (laughs) if floyd is up here i'd do the same thing too uh, but and, then, and then have them being like, Ooh. <laughs> man, if we had editors, we would totally be like, hey, editors, throw that in there with our cats. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. Yeah. That's a really like. It's a really interesting topic because. Um, the you know, sometimes asking a question that seems so obvious uh, is very challenging. Mm-hmm. You know, most people are like, well, it's freedom. We got freedom, right? And you say, well, what is freedom? Yeah. And they're like, uh-oh, <laughs> I can't define that. Well, it's the same thing with people who say like, oh, science, science, science. And you say, okay, well, what, what, what is science? And they can't explain it, you know. <laughs> or they they can explain it in a way that supports their perception of it. Yeah, and I'm the same thing. Yeah, that that <laughs> exactly. Like, okay, so clearly you don't really know the ultimate meaning of this, or you have a superficial understanding of it. Um, but it's important to question things. It's important to to like always be skeptical even of yourself and and things like that and i I, well that's probably something that's uh conditioned out of us by the propaganda um but man wow that (laughs) that is a that is a good good topic um so what about like like what should what do you think freedom should be derived off of like earlier you had mentioned you know what happens if they take away your right to defend yourself or you know to say what you want you know express yourself or whatever and i started thinking like you know how come our particular bill of rights or any of the amendments really grants any right to um you know autonomy of your body you know like that sounds to me natural freedom you know right well so so shouldn't our country really actually have legislature that goes into protecting abortions you know your your right to choose and all that stuff like well that would be freedom right (laughs) absolutely and and it, it probably should be a component of that in fact really you don't need any of the other amendments if self autonomy um is the core of it all because everything can be easily derived from that and maybe maybe the people who penned the 
the constitution and the bill of rights and stuff like they they thought like well of course that's that's exactly how it is and because they didn't explicitly write it now of course lawyers and judges and everybody's like duking it out in the courts and it's a mess but yeah. that's the thing it's like yeah um self-ownership is really all you have to have everything else beyond that can be easily extrapolated from that um and man i mean it, it would it would eliminate all of well or most of the societal woes the things that people are uh, most uh passionate about these days i think huh. if that was the core of it and you you don't even need a bill of rights at that point self-ownership you know you own yourself you could do what you want with yourself even kill yourself um that shouldn't be against the law we've already been down that road um <laughs> and, and the product kills <laughs> them all <laughs> Man, that was a good episode of Star Trek TNG. Uh, but the product of your your labor, you know, consuming your time on this world, uh, whatever you do, whatever you acquire as a result of that is yours. Um, and yeah, like, I, oh, man. What, what, what were you saying originally now? Hang on, um, let me have some more beer here. <laughs> I don't remember if I, I I moved along to this other point yet, but um, I was thinking, uh, what about the whole black and white fallacy? Like it's got to be this way or that way, you know. When uh, when it comes to like their interpretation of how free they are, you know, like the Second Amendment is a great example right because you know there's um people that say you know any, anytime it becomes a little bit more complicated to get a, a license or you know register a gun or something you know they're taking your rights away and it's like what what, what rights and how much of them have been like removed like on what on what metric do you know that what well, you know <laughs> that that that's true. That's a good point because we don't have a measuring stick to to we don't have a yardstick or a meter stick to measure that by, um, and as such, it's all subjective. I would say like self defense is very much a part of um, self ownership, the ability to dictate what you do with yourself. Um, and so from the standpoint of self-defense, like anything should go, uh, whatever foes you're against, be it uh, a bunch of, uh, I don't know, Native Americans with bows and arrows, uh, or be it your own government, or be it aliens from outer space, like whatever the threat is, you should have something to counter that, and it should be okay, as long as you don't use it in anger against another person. Um, that that's where that's where the line is drawn i think at that point possessing those don't doesn't matter at all um well, the very first i don't know a whole lot about gun history but you probably do uh, like the, <laughs> a little bit the very first gun ever made what purpose was it made for hunting or killing other humans uh well i mean we're going pigeons out of the sky we're we're, pro we're probably going back to like china i mean you're talking like explosives right like black powder a and projected things like that. a projected yeah. explosive sure <laughs> um probably going back to china and it might have been more of like a novelty along with fireworks that a bunch of people realize like whoa this is this is actually quite useful um i just like any kind of technological innovation, I don't think the original idea behind it is what it becomes when it's eventually realized. Um, yeah. That I'm, diodes are a good example. I mean, who would have thought the LED would exist today? Um, like the person that created 
the original diode never envisioned envisioned that happening um, but yet here they are and we have to deal with it um and, and like So I don't know why there would be a distinction between hunting or self-defense. I mean, self-defense, killing people, right? You know, you've, you've got uh, somebody who's going to kill you. So you, hopefully you stop them without killing them by the threat of killing them. Um, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and by and large, that actually, like, if you look at the data, that is pretty much how it works out um not if they're both armed well that's true but at least now you're on the same level right like if, if one guy has a gun and another guy doesn't well the guy without the gun is obviously going to be the loser um <laughs> in every i mean I, I can't imagine unless you're a really good knife thrower or a slingshot person or a ninja or a ninja with a slingshot yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't need a projectile mm -hmm. but it, it does it does kind of like level things out in that regard um i i mean i don't know that the minutia is really relevant like the the whole thing is it all comes back down to self-ownership um and if you own yourself you should be able to defend your life and it doesn't matter whether you're defending your life uh, against another person with a, a knife, another person with a gun, a group of people with guns, or a state with a bunch of nukes. Like, you should be able to defend yourself against a bunch of assholes. I guess. I don't know. I, <laughs> I mean, this is like a very complex topic, even though the, the subject is seemingly very simple. Um, no, this yeah. is a huge, huge concept. <laughs> oh yeah, well, and and that's the thing. It's like, like you, it seems simple on the surface, right? You say, "Oh, freedom," right? Oh, that's easy. Everybody knows what freedom is, but nobody does. Who knows what freedom is, really? Like, like asking people, "What is science?" Like, "What is freedom?" What does it mean to be free? And if you ask a thousand people, you'll probably get a thousand different answers yeah and so if you want everybody to be free what system can accommodate all of those I, honestly i don't think there is such a thing um but that's that should be the goal i think not the majority or anything like that but like everybody how can we have a system that is as accommodating to everybody's views without infringing while infringing on as few people as possible i guess well, see that's where it starts to get into the weeds doesn't it because um you know going back to an earlier conversation once you've got two people all of a sudden the issue of freedom becomes more and more chaotic you know mm -hmm. um you know just all kinds of tangled interpretations and stuff like that and and uh that's that's where i think like a, a largely ignored or forgotten part of freedom that also needs to be talked about is responsibility like oh. every freedom you have you have this projected out responsibility to ensure others have that freedom too you know yeah. anything that you expect to be free to do you should expect that other people should as well, well you know like yeah absolutely sort of thing <laughs> and, and and if you if you hold those things to be dear you know you should make it a point to work very hard to ensure that they're upheld everywhere no matter the, the situation no matter even if you disagree with somebody like their freedom is paramount. Their ability to be who they are, regardless of, of views or whatever. I mean, as long, again, non-aggression, as long as they're not like imprisoning somebody, raping them or oh, which oh, shit, we're going to be demonetized for saying that. 
um, or, or killing people or stealing or whatever, you, you know. And, and if you see somebody else doing that, I, I, like you said, responsibility, it's your duty as a fellow human being to step in and step up and stop that from happening. Yeah. Um, if you want these things to stick around, uh, like, uh, I guess just a, a quick uh, side story, like I enjoy going target shooting and I go to the Capitol State Forest here in Washington State, uh, or I did before the ammo uh, shortage of 2021. Um, but when I did, you know, I would go there and I'd see a bunch of like shell casings all over the ground, a bunch of garbage and stuff. And so when I went there, I started bringing a garbage bag um, and picking up, like I would pick up what I left behind, but then I would pick up a little bit extra, some other garbage, a couple things. I'd pick up some more shell casings um, and, and clean things up a little bit because I, I feel like it's so important that the next generation is able to enjoy target shooting in nature like I do. And, and, you know, it's like, it's not really that much of an inconvenience to take a few extra minutes to pick up some stuff off the ground and throw it in a bag and then throw it in your garbage. But it's a huge inconvenience if all of a sudden everybody starts freaking out, like, oh my God, this whole place is a mess. It's, it's trashed. Like somebody, go, there ought to be a law. And then all of a sudden <laughs> nobody can go there. Like, I don't want that to happen. And, and so I feel like it's my responsibility to, to take up the slack for a bunch of slackers who don't know how to do that. They probably didn't have a mom, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I just, yeah, I feel like people oftentimes have a, well, feel they feel entitled to yeah to have these things and not have to actually do anything for them, you know. <laughs> like, uh, well, and that that probably comes from uh, the fact that a lot of these things just simply existed, and nobody realizes that there was a time when none of these things existed. You know, we were hunter gatherers running from wildebeests at one point in time, you know basically life was Infant short build a beast <laughs> yeah like life was short we have it good now we we don't even know how good we have it now at this point um and and that's probably something that that should be considered like yeah like a little bit of extra legwork isn't really the end of the world in that regard um uh, mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, I just thought it would be an interesting angle to get into all the, all the metaphysics of freedom. Um, I don't. I, I honestly don't think that we could tackle all those angles in an hour at all. Like even even just like touching on all of those. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I would leave it up to the viewers. Like, hey, throw some comments down there in the comment section. Give us your ideas. I mean, we'll, we'll probably have to revisit this again. Come back again and, and, and address different people's ideas. I'm sure there's going to be things that we didn't even think of. Well, guaranteed. Uh, well, <clears throat> we didn't talk about the innate human right to not have a soldier sleep in your bed. <laughs> the third amendment right yeah <laughs> that's not a human right that's a usa right um but you know presumably wait, wait, you can't, does that mean you can just go to somebody's house and take their bed in a different country <laughs> yes that is a little weird now now granted i think there was originally a discussion if you read some of the original texts like the federalist papers and stuff around the founding of the country there was some conversation about whether the bill of rights even should be written at all whether mm -hmm. these things should be enumerated or 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 not because then it would be 
construed that the state bestowed these rights upon people because they're listed there's very specific points um and also uh it like a lot of these things are reactionary to the times now i have a huge problem with people saying well it was a whole different time back then yeah it was technologically sure we had flintlock rifles maybe maybe wheel lock rifles or match lock like that might be the best we have we didn't have the mina ball yet that happened in the civil war um and we basically had sailing ships uh everybody cooked on fires rode horses and now all of a sudden we almost have flying cars we're going to the moon and mars and we have supercomputers in our pockets like yeah the world has changed from a technological standpoint but i don't know that it's changed from a sociological standpoint we're we've evolved surely as, as humans but how really how much have we actually evolved I don't think we're actually that different in our heads than those people in the 17, 1700s. Um, so, man, oh, I was going somewhere with that. Um, <laughs> maybe if I have a little more beer, I'll, <laughs> I'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> but the, the Third Amendment, yeah, like soldiers sleeping in your bed like they they thought that was a big enough deal that that went into the constitution (laughs) like i I, honestly i have never seen a court case uh ever utilize the third amendment um I i don't know i mean maybe maybe in the future who knows i don't know when the earthlings versus uh, all Deberon alien war happens, like maybe. Um, <laughs> I say we challenge uh, that show NCIS to come up with an episode where somebody violates the Third Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I mean, I, you know, the thing is, it is well thought out. Like certainly it's very clever the the constitution the bill of rights very very clever Um, the rhyming was clever and the (laughs) pentameter was clever (laughs) (laughs) but you know and that that's something that that also like the whole freedom thing um the idea that the well because i think you brought this up at some point that the constitution is seen as like a, something of a bible yeah it's like the word of god the founding fathers they're <laughs> godlike well no they're fullable <laughs> <laughs> fallible people uh like we all are and they're just simply trying to condense a lot of complex ideas into a very short span of words um i wish that today uh legislators would do the same i mean good god what thousands of pages thousands of pages just for some kind of random bullshit pork barrel thing and the founding documents of this country fit in a little teeny tiny tiny book that can fit into my pocket like why can't we do that this day you know I, man yeah but but the, that's the thing is like a lot of people treat it as if it's like some holy doctrine something immutable something that is like timeless and special that like oh my god these people everything is it's so special and perfect like i mean it's clever like i said um 
but I don't think it's it, it's the word of God in that regard. Like you you can't deviate from it at all. That doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Especially as society changes and things like that. I mean, we're talking the seventeen hundreds, so uh, the industrial age had just there was a little spark of that at that point and now i mean like like i said people were lighting fires they cooked over fires they rode horses um you know now we have 3d printers we're 3d printing houses for god's sake uh <laughs> we don't have horses we have teslas um rocket ships supercomputers like the things that nobody could ever imagine and yes a lot of the things are based around the human condition and human psychology but i don't think these people were psychologists they were smart but they didn't know everything and that's yeah. the thing it's like you know a lot of these things we should be taking as like, okay, that's a really good starting point. They had, they were onto something. Um, a bunch of smart people got together. They created these documents, which make a lot of sense in a lot of ways, but they're not the end all be all. Um, maybe we've learned some things since then. Um, and, and I don't think there's any room for that in a lot of people's minds because they're like oh yeah we we can't have you cannot move one bit because this is the word of god i think i know where freedom comes from really freedom comes from your neighbors comes from them making the choice not to infringe on you hmm Ooh, yeah Hmm. I, I could stroke point. my beard now. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and that, that, that's a good point that, you know, the idea that some words on paper are really something that changes things. I mean, it's essentially like if, if I wrote a book or an instruction manual, right? Like you go to Ikea. You buy a, a, a shelf or a bed in a box and there's an instruction manual like, okay, you could follow it if you want, or you could just take everything out and try to assemble it yourself. And it's going to be all cattywampus and weird, probably. Um, <laughs> but you don't have to. Um, and that's the whole thing with the Constitution. Like, it's just words. It's some ideas that some people had a long, long time ago, long before any of us were ever born. Um, are they good words? Well, I don't know. Like <laughs> history is going to bear that out, I guess. And yeah, the, the, the clinging on to that as if it's like, you got to hold on to this because this is it. I mean, it is a good idea. I mean, it was certainly revolutionary at the time. Like there was not, the, the founding of the United States was kind of the first time when the average person had any kind of say or autonomy. Um, so so like at, at, at its birth, it probably was the freest place in the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. It isn't necessarily anymore. You know? And well, no, all you have to do is look at the stack of legislation that's out there, like all the laws and stuff and all the complexity and everything. It's like that that is not. I don't consider that freedom when I can't even understand what I'm supposed to do and not do. I mean, normally you just okay. like deal with your neighbors, you know, if if a law aligns with the concept that freedom is bestowed upon you by your neighbors and if the law aligns with that idea like hey uh you have definitely tried to not bestow that upon that person you know so whatever that is should be wrong 
Yeah. You know, if, if it were that cut and dry, that would be fine. I, I would not see that as anything other than a protection from freedom. But too many laws is definitely a, a vice grip on freedom <laughs> because it gets into stuff that doesn't necessarily impinge on your freedom. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I just think if people thought of, um, I, I, I had it and then I lost it. Damn it. Well, okay. It was something I remembered from earlier. <laughs> I I, so you're, you're uh, dealing with uh, what I was dealing with earlier. Beer. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, you know, I, I think freedom is innate. Like I think there is, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing whatever you want to do. Like if, if you live in your own house and you're by yourself, you should be able to do anything, whatever it is, however wild and weird and crazy. It doesn't matter what somebody thinks of you. It doesn't matter at all. As soon as you start going out into the world and interacting with people, now you're subject to cultural norms and things like that. Um, should there be some kind of uh legal uh enforcement behind that well i i don't know i mean i I think societal pressure is a lot more powerful than guns um just look to japan like how things exist there like dishonoring your family is like the height of wrongdoing take take guns out of it though because that that's a, a bit of a caricature of of the concept of law right like all, all it you know let's say we hadn't invented weapons yet but we definitely had some form of law well we've had uh, weapons ever since yeah. we've uh discovered bones uh, <laughs> so i mean there's going to be something somebody with a bigger stick basically um but okay let's just say it's uh uh i don't know um uh, uh, a powerful suggestion that that you (laughs) obey the rules of society um shit i had a point that was gonna go with (laughs) uh or beer Um, (laughs) so you said took take out guns uh you know uh neighbors things like that um uh, yeah, I kind of kind of lost my train of thought too. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we've had too much beer. Cobra man, Cobra man, <laughs> why are we always fighting? <laughs> well, and, and yeah, man, uh, I got a lot of points to talk about there. Um, but I, I think you're onto something with like the neighbors thing, like your people in your town or your neighborhood kind of. Well, it's, it's fluctuating in culture. Yeah. It's fluctuating in any given moment, you know, yeah. some stranger you pass on the street and there's nobody else in sight. That person at that moment is bestowing freedom on you. Yeah. So, you know, you can, you can basically kind of create some kind of matrix or whatever to, to plot out your freedoms based on who you interact with, when, at what point in your life, and, and your freedoms will fluctuate wildly. But more often than not, they're going to be really high. Like most people aren't doing anything to screw with you. And, you know, you can easily have interactions with other people without any freedoms being you know taken away but well yeah it you, will you, happen <laughs> i i think you start off if you to, to go back way back to the island analogy you know on an island if you're the only person on your own planet um you have ultimate freedom you can do whatever you want as soon as more people come in things start changing and you have to negotiate you have to uh you know come up with compromises to accommodate different 
wants and needs you know i mean imagine if if all of a sudden pineapple pizza was mandated that that's what you had to eat every single night because one guy likes pineapple pizza you know that that's an infringement on your freedom i do Uh, that well i I do too (laughs) but not everybody agrees on that it's a very (laughs) polarizing topic Um, (laughs) but yeah like man oh wow the um the pineapple pizza cracked me up because they always say fruit doesn't belong on pizza but they think a tomato is <laughs> no yeah, exactly oh that's a vegetable <laughs> nope that's a fruit um sorry to burst your bubble i guess um and pizza's full of tomatoes oh man yeah i wow that i i i think we beard ourselves uh enough into this topic but i think it's a topic that deserves a lot more introspection and analysis like there's a lot more going on there um yeah because it's something that's like really important to a lot of people well to uh, honestly to everybody um but just it means different things to different people like what what does it mean to be free uh does it mean to be free of something or does it mean to be like you know free of obligation or something right like things that you you have to pay bills or something like if you don't have to pay bills are you now free if you have limitless money are you now free you know if you have the ability to go wherever you want to go are you now free or possess any tool that you want are you now free or um think any thought are you now free where is the threshold and i think it is different for everybody and that's really important when somebody is thinking about freedom and assuming that it means the same thing to other people that it does to them. Yeah. And and that's really important that it no, it absolutely does not. Hmm. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if we would agree on that, but I think we do. And uh, I think we do. Well, I yeah. think we agree on a lot more than we think we do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, freedom? Oh, freedom. After some people talking, your prison is walking in this world all alone. <laughs> Desperado. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm totally gonna cut to the end song after that. <laughs> oh, <it's> so good. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, this is actually like a really good topic of conversation and oh, oh, man, I'm just like I feel like we didn't really talk about it enough I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna blame space dust for that or <laughs> whatever you got over there a couple quarters and then I forget what I was drinking earlier <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> Oh, man. Getting a lot these days. <laughs> well, if I don't cut to that point at the end there, um, thanks for deep sink diving with us into the topic of the very to- complex topic of freedom and what it means to you and me and you and you. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for sticking it out. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, thanks the for trouble <laughs> I see. Okay, we're not going to break into song. Nobody knows. <laughs> I saw Rose. Whoa! <laughs> she's a bass. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man. Okay, I'm gonna have to keep that in because that was actually really good. Oh man. Well, at any rate, thanks for sticking it out all the way to the end. Um, all of you uh, loyal deep sink divers out there that uh, watch the entire video start to finish, uh, we appreciate you. Uh, just saying, yeah. Love you all. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. You have any closing thoughts, Casey? Ah. Uh.